Hey everybody, this is James at Rattlesnake Defense. Uh, it's a beautiful West Virginia day. So if you got a little ambient sound coming down in the background, rain on the tin roof I hear is popular, uh, even though it's something I grew up with. But I wanted to talk to you about a story, a thing that happened to me a little while back. Uh, it's been about a year ago, I think. And I haven't really posted about it because I wasn't really sure what to think. So let me know what you think and you know I'll just put it out there there's no reason to be shy so uh, stay tuned So about a year ago or so, I was contacted by a gentleman named Daniel O'Finn. Uh, I got a random email, which, you know, if you're somebody who has a YouTube channel, you get lots of emails constantly. So that's nothing, that's nothing unique. But this one was from the Finnish national media. And I thought that was random enough that I clicked on it. And he said he'd like to do an interview. So I answered him, just honestly, just got a curiosity. And we end up going back and forth. Uh, he actually sets a date, a place. He says he's going to come to me from D.C. Uh, we're going to meet up at the store. So I schedule, you know, I schedule some time off from work. I ask the owner if he minds if we shoot some footage inside the store, which of course he didn't care. And then I waited. And of course, you know, I thought it was going to be somebody with. Um, you know, a, a cheap little setup, similar to mine. You know, just somebody from, from Finland. And then uh, old boy shows up in a Subaru wagon with Washington, D.C. plates. And dude gets out with, like, what I assume to be, like, a $20,000 camera. So, you know, and then the, that's the cameraman. And then the reporter guy looks, he's prim and proper. He's dressed to the hilt. Perfect hair. Shaved face. Nice tan. And I'm like, ah, shit. I done stepped in it now. These guys are actually serious, and now they're up here in my sticks wanting to interview the dumb hillbilly about firearms. So the premise for the interview was that he wanted to ask why he I thought the AR-15s were so popular and why they were so controversial, which anybody who works in the fire ministry knows the answer to that question. Um, more than anything else, it's media, it's hype. But uh, we go to the back of the store. We talk, chit chat a little bit. Uh, I had brought um, 10 of my personal ARs to the store. I had them laid across the table so he could look at. Uh, of course, uh, I'll show you all this uh, in the interviews. But, uh, and we go back and forth. And he asked a question. He seemed really cool. And I'm like, I feel like this is going to be an ambush, you know. These guys, I, I, I did a, you know, I did a little background search on on this guy, and on Finland and and their stance on guns, and and they're kind of in the middle, you know. The Europeans, they're not pro gun, but they most of their citizens have done some service in the military, and and you know they're not anti per se. Not like some of the other European countries. So I wasn't sure what to expect. So we're talking. He's looking at my guns. We're chit-chatting back and forth he turns the camera on the first thing he says is why would someone need a weapon so powerful and that's when it hit me he'd come down there to answer a question that he'd already answered and i don't think he was much interested in my answer and i think he picked this dumb hillbilly out because he thought that i wouldn't handle myself well on camera or whatever and you know maybe he's right depending on how you feel about the interviews and again i'll link all this stuff and I know the link's going to look weird, but it's in Finnish, and it, you have to Google will translate the article for you. But let me play uh, the first part of the interview here. Tell me, why is this so popular? Because it's a simple, relatively cheap, and multi-purpose rifle. Something you use for a lot of different things, and can fit a lot of different roles, and can be changed to fit virtually anything you want that you would need a rifle for. Och det här vapnet, det marknadsför för sportskytte, för eh, jakt, men också för att eh, försvara sitt eget hem. Eh, this is a very powerful weapon. 
to to for it, home it, defense. It can be, and it has is it too is, powerful. I hope that no one ever needs the full power of this weapon for defense, but I would rather the good people have more power than they need. Och det här vapnet är också ett vapen som har använts i över hälften av alla massskjutningar i det här landet. Och ett vapen som nu är väldigt omdebatterat. Tio delstater har förbjudit det här vapnet, men ungefär 40 har inte gjort det. It has become the pivotal model, specific model that everyone argues about now, that there's any sort of violence regarding these guns but you know if, if there's one thing that i could could tell anybody is that these guns that are mine they've never harmed anyone and they won't and these pose no risk and i'm not sure that getting rid of this particular model or even arguing over this particular model isn't a waste of energy uh, a lot of people have these at home uh, people really enjoy shooting them it's a lot of fun to shoot and i think that's i think that's the point that a lot of people miss is they they are it's entertainment it's sport and it's utility so it's something to be multi-purpose mm. i could use it for coyote hunting i could use it for defense or i could use it just to go to the range and have a nice day shooting targets all right so there you can see you know i was caught a little off guard with this questions of course we're talking about like a 15 minute interview uh dude cuts it into snippets that's what the news does they edit it down um all things considered i feel like i could have done a lot worse uh i, I knew in advance i didn't want to do the the because this is america and you i could do what i want because of the second amendment because i wanted to actually try to speak to his viewers um i was aware that this would be broadcast in finnish and swedish and i feel like no american seen it and based on the fact that i've yet to have one person contact me about this interview that was done a year ago i can't confirm no american saw this so that being said, I wanted to come from a, a, a standpoint outside of the argument that I and everybody else usually makes, which is we have a fundamental right to defend ourselves, a God-given right under the Constitution, and piss off if you don't like it. Fair enough. That wasn't going to work on him. So I come at him with the utilitarian argument. This is a, it's a nice gun. It could be used for a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, the thing I was trying to get across and, and, and something I talked about more that got cut out was that, uh, you know, the gun is only as evil as the person using it. A uh, gun in a good guy's hands is good. A gun in a bad guy's hands can be bad. Of course, then we get, he starts talking about dealer stuff. Being a dealer, what do you have to do to buy a gun? I, I really think that he thought you could walk in with cash and just walk out with a gun from a dealership. Everybody here knows that's not true. You got to do the background check and uh, sign and driver's license and all that jazz. Uh, so let me just skip here and we'll go to the, the second part of the interview. So if I would like to buy a gun. Say if you were an American citizen yeah, coming yeah. here, right. I could sell you a, I could sell you an AR-15 over the counter. Yeah. We have to wait for this to be approved. Once this is approved, then we do the transaction and, and you could walk out with the gun. So I'll show you my driver's you license. Would, we would, I would yeah. keep the driver's license. We would fill out this form. Yeah. Uh, this has all of your personal information, yeah. uh, a series of questions, yes or no questions. All of your ID information goes here. Yeah. This is then submitted to the FBI. Yeah. And we wait a moment. How long? For the, uh, it depends on the individual, actually. It can, it can be average five minutes. All of these forms have to be kept and, and logged forever. So there's always a record. We have a record of who yeah. took what gun and the serial number gun model yeah. everything's attached to that so but in a nutshell i need my, i need a driver's license you need a I driver's need a license card oh. and i need to fill in this fill this, this correct form. correct fill this form and then we like i said we submit that yeah and depending on the outcome of that then you could then leave with the weapon right so it's not sounds easy it is if you haven't done anything if there's nothing bad on your background yeah it'd be a lot harder if you were someone who weren't supposed to have it yeah All right, so there we go over, you know, in the store, what you got to do for background check. Of course, you know, those background checks are kept at the, the, the stores. Uh, the government doesn't have access to them. The government's not supposed to have access to them. Um, our forms have all been kept on location, and, and you can't just walk in and get any, any document you want. You know, those are protected by us and, and will continue to be, but... He seemed a little off-put by the fact that you actually have to have a background check. And, and I don't know how these people... 
I would love to know where these people get their information. Um, this is a prevalent thing. And any of you that watch this, all right, you're watching a guy on YouTube talk about guns. You know as well as I do that half the crap that the anti-gun people say is just wrong. And I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand how some politician that's, that's been in power for 30 years doesn't have one person that she can call and say, hey, I want to make an anti-gun statement. How can I say this without looking like a complete moron? And they look like a moron anyway. So, again, that's, you know, sorry about the tangent. So, as you can see in that, that first one, we actually went out and shot. Now, this is really interesting. We did the first interview there with my ARs. They went out on the floor and they shot a little footage there uh, at the store. And then we actually went to where I shoot at the range. Now, the place I shoot is a good 40 minutes up a dirt road in the middle of God's country uh, in a place called, of all things, Big Mountain in West Virginia. All right, so we're driving up this road. I'm in my vehicle. Sorry, another tangent. I was actually in a Ford Fusion Hybrid that was my wife's. And he made a kind of a snarky comment about how I was driving a hybrid in a country where fuel is almost free. And I tried to explain to him that I literally live in nature you're not going to find a bunch of people who who are more preservationists of nature the people that literally live in nature all right the the lumber companies and some of the coal companies they want to come and cut the top of the mountains off and they want to wreck the land and take the resources and we're fairly protective of that i know that a man's got to make a living all right i know the coal mines you know i've i've sold a lot of guns to coal miners i got no problem with coal mines i'm not a big fan of the mountaintop removal and I think that's been done away with at this point, you know, fact check me on that, but I don't see very much of it anymore locally is what I'm saying. So I don't want to say that, you know, seeing a coal train coming through uh, upsets me a little bit. I know that means somebody got paid, but in the same breath, I want to preserve nature. I am sick and tired of being lectured by people that's never touched a real tree about how I need to take care of nature. Why don't you come out here and live in it for a minute? Maybe you'll understand a little better why some of the stuff you say sounds idiotic. Tangent aside, sorry. So we're driving 30 minutes up the road. We get up to the range. He gets the video of me shooting the guns. And we talk for a pretty long time, a couple hours actually. Uh, they actually took opportunities. They fired my guns. Uh, they shot a couple of them. They loved them. They shot that red uh, 6.5 Grendel that you see in the video, which is one that I built for me just to, because I'd never tried the Grendel. Nothing special, but I thought it would look good on the camera. And, you know, it does. So, he's like, I, don't, I just don't understand why you think someone should have this. I said, did you see that house we passed by just a minute ago? He goes, yeah. I said, people live up here. This is 30 minutes off the beaten path. People live up here. And that guy can call 911. And they might somebody come. Maybe. Maybe somebody's coming. Maybe they're not. It wouldn't be uncommon for us not to have a state police or a deputy in our county. So if they do show up, the response time's an hour, an hour and a half. So buddy, it's up to you. Nobody's coming to save you. So whatever it is that you encounter, if you're a hardworking, good guy, I want you to have the overwhelming firepower superiority. All right? I want you to have complete overkill against whatever it is that threatens you or your family. So it's not my place to tell you or that guy that lives up here on the mountain, or anybody else, what they should protect their family with. Why would I limit him? Why would I take firepower? And let's assume for a moment that the premise that he's saying is correct. And the AR-15 is, by God, the most powerful gun ever made. With an AR-15 in my hand, I wish I had it. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. Uh, and the bullet that is utilized, a 50 caliber, these kinds of bullets, uh, need to be licensed and do not need to be on the streets. It'll lob both your arms off and blow your head completely clean off and blow a hundred people in two with five shots in 0 .02 seconds. Let's go based on that premise alone. Let's say all that's true. So what? If some crackhead is trying to like rob you, get him. What happens to him is no concern to me. 
If you initiate violence against peaceful people that live out in the middle of nowhere and something bad happens to you, I don't know what to tell you. Protect yourself. Get a double barrel shotgun. Have the shells of 12 gauge shotgun. And I promise you, as I told my wife, we live in an area that's wooded and somewhat secluded. I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not going to. So. You know, even if everything he said was completely true with the ambush of this is a very powerful weapon. Do, do people need a weapon this powerful? And I was like, dude, this is a 223. I went and got him a 30 out 6 shot. I'm like, this is a medium weapon. A 30 out 6. This is medium. This is not powerful. And the only thing that, that makes an AR-15 powerful maybe is capacity. But you could get 30 rounds in almost anything nowadays. So, you know, the thing I, the argument I was making to them is the whole thing about the argument about the AR-15 itself is stupid. They, they want to pick apart little pieces and parts of the gun, and they want to come after you for the forced reset triggers of the bump stocks and, and pick it apart. And it's not any worse than a 9mm carbine with 30 rounds or a Glock with a stick mag. You know, I, I feel like the vast majority of actual crime is committed with handguns, and cheap handguns at that. As somebody who's sold guns for years and years and years uh most of the stuff that we, we actually go to the auctions and at the auctions they sell the guns that have been confiscated uh from criminals and you'll never guess it's jennings it's rusty beat up 38s that don't look safe to shoot it's little uh those old imported german 380s it's a lot of high points it's a lot of those Cobras and Cobra Derringers. It's $100 guns, almost exclusively. Every once in a while, you'll see a, maybe an 870 or a, uh, some kind of shotgun, maybe a rifle. But that's it, man. All right. And these are the guns that have been confiscated through crimes that we go to the state and actually bid on. So, you know, what I don't see is a lot of custom AR-15s. But I guess those guys, like, done got everybody and there's nobody left because... You know, it blows a hole this big around or whatever. Anyway, tangent, tangent, tangent. I'm sorry, this has turned into a straight ramble. But I'm out here on my land, and it's not your place to tell me what I can protect my family with. All right? I have a six-month-old daughter. You come after me, I get you back. We'll play. I want the good guys to have the overwhelming, you know, firepower superiority. That's it. If, if somebody tries to mug grandma, I hope grandma blasts them. I'm sorry I have to use these words. I wouldn't use the words I'd normally use, but this is YouTube. Because I, I want grandma to, you know, keep being grandma. And if a person tries to hurt her, I hope they get hurt. I, I wish I don't hope I don't wish anybody gets killed. That wouldn't be very Christian. I don't wish violence on anybody. So the best thing you can do is just leave us alone. So, you know, we don't have a lot of home break-ins here in West Virginia. We don't have a lot of that kind of violence because everybody here is armed. And it's a fairly polite place. You gotta be careful. You're not gonna carjack somebody in his pickup truck around here because you're gonna get shot. So this dude got a full hillbilly education in short period. And I just think that they come from D.C. And he comes from the capital in Finland. And they have these ideas because where they, they, they live, right, as a reporter, they live in the higher end areas. It's safe where they live. They don't have a, a meth house. Literally somebody cooking meth two houses down from you like, you know, us silly poor people. So they don't think that you should have anything like that. And I got that feeling off of him anyway. And also, he was somebody who, he skipped his military service. So, you know, as soon as I seen these guys come in, they touched the guns, I could realize they had no idea what they were touching. They had no idea how to operate these weapons. They had no, had nothing, knew nothing about them all, but they'd already made up their mind that that's a bad thing. And this is probably going on long enough. You know, single cut me just ranting into a microphone on my porch. But... I just want it to be known that I wasn't prepared. I got ambushed a little bit. 
I, I didn't make the arguments. You know, it's like when you have an argument with one of your friends, and then you're driving home, and there's 20 things you wish you'd have said. It's just like that. So, check the article out. Um, let me know if you think I suck. I mean, I kind of think I suck, so I'm not going to take it to heart. You know, I'm, I'm just a, a fat hillbilly. Likes guns. You know, and I think everybody should try it out once. And then, you know, if you don't like it, that's cool. I'm not going to make you buy one. But, you know, if you like an AR, or if you like a... I don't care if you like a Tech 9. Like Glock. Like Smith, whatever. We like guns. We like guns, guys. So, you know, if they don't get it, I tried to explain it to him. He understood when he left all of my positions. That did not come through in the interview. A lot of that got cut out. A lot of it got taken out of context. So be warned, this is the game. It could have went a lot worse. I think he actually played it a lot fairer than I thought he was going to. Uh, but you be the judge. Thank you very much. Let me know how you think I did, and I appreciate you guys. If you're still here, thank you.